126 meters long, 10,000 gross tons, a vessel that redefines the yacht industry. This is Octopus. The engineering masterpiece is built on a displacement hull, a design that has more than just the speed advantage in it. The strength and range that this philosophy provides is key to Octopus's success, allowing it go divide the sea in two without any obstacles on its way. Thanks to the design of pushing and not playing across the water, this yacht has a great fuel efficiency at lower speeds and allows enormous carrying capacity, which I mentioned in the beginning of this video, 10,000 gross tons. The optimization of the hull revolves around stability in open oceans, which is backed up by the fact that the vessel has been rented to the Royal Navy for rescue and exploration missions. A fine entry at the bow allows the octopus to cut through the waves and fuller midsections for buoyancy in space. What's even more amazing is that this yacht has 1A certification, also known as the Ice Class 1, where the bow and forward hull plating are made thicker and reinforced with closer spaced framing. This ensures the hull can withstand compressive ice loads and localized impacts. But in order to have such a diversified and strong engineering wonder, you need to be very careful with material selection and trade-offs. The steel hull provides strength and ductility, which is highly optimized for ice navigation. One of the main characteristics of the steel is that it can deform plastically without sudden fracture, which is pivotal for the rescue missions that this yacht is often sent to. But then again, what would the octopus be without the aluminum superstructure? Thanks to its lightness, far lighter than the steel, the aluminum reduces weight above the waterline, lowering the center of gravity and improving stability. Considering the fact that the taller superstructures are very important in the operation process of the octopus, the aluminum selection provides more stability without compromising the balance of the vessel. But then again, it's not like the choice of aluminum comes without challenges. As you probably know, this is a material that tends to expand or contract more than steel depending on the variation of the temperatures. It's not only that, there is the galvanic corrosion that you need to have in mind when you join it directly with steel. But we'll get into the engineering solution of this massive challenge a bit later in this video. Teak is used for building the deck primarily because of the durability, resistance to rot and elegant look it gives off. The non-slip surface that this timber provides is just one of the extra bonuses as to why it's the primary choice for vessels of this type, but its usage is far greater than just the looks. It withstands salt exposure better than any other type of wood. There are a total of eight decks, including a private owner's deck, and the accommodation is up to 26 guests that would be settled in 13 staterooms. 63 crew members across 30 cabins are responsible for the operations on board. So what does the structure of the octopus look like? The steel hull is built around a skeleton of transverse frames, also known as ribs, and longitudinal girders or beams that are running lengthwise. Thanks to this combination, the vessel can distribute loads from waves, cargo, and machinery, further improving its efficiency and stability on open seas. The vertical steel partitions that create watertight compartments are crucial for the safety of the octopus. You might ask yourself, how? Well, if one compartment floods, the ship remains afloat, and on this yacht, bulkheads support the interior layout as well, such as the submarine garage, hangars, and guest decks. As a matter of fact, there are two submarines on this yacht, and one of them was lent to Google Earth for a very challenging project, Explore the Ocean. Then again, a lot of thought is placed in the load management. The structure that I just explained helps the hull against the process of sagging in heavy seas. For ice class, frames are placed closer together at the bow to resist the crushing forces. And now, let's see how the engineers managed to marry the hull and the superstructure while preventing the galvanic corrosion. Most of you are already familiar with the process of galvanic corrosion. It happens when steel and aluminum are welded directly, as well as with the mismatched thermal expansion. This is where the invention of bimetallic transition joint, for example, triclad, is used. 
This is an explosion bonded plate with layers of steel and aluminum fused together under extreme pressure. So how does the process go? The steel side is welded to the hull and the aluminum side to the superstructure, allowing a rigid corrosion proof joint to be created. It's one of the most delicate engineering operations that has been invented in the yacht building world, and the precision is literally everything. Incorrect bonding can lead to structural cracks or leaks as time passes by, so the vessel is going to be eaten by the corrosion and the mighty slaps of the powerful open sea waves. And a welding process that's so complicated will definitely require checkups after it's done. That is why the welds are checked with x-rays and inspected with ultrasound for potential disturbances in their consistency. This is done with every other system on the yacht. Pumps, generators, and fire systems were not just tested, but retested in order to confirm the stability and safety of them. When the construction ended, Octopus was put on the most extensive tests that you could think of, sea trials. Days of pushing engines, thrusters, and stabilizers to their absolute limit in order to ensure that this yacht can perform in the harshest conditions possible. Let's talk about the propulsion a little bit. Octopus is powered by multiple MTU diesel engines, driving twin propellers through reduction gearboxes. The power provided by these beasts is enough to push nearly 10,000 tons of steel through the water at speeds of up to 19 knots. Electric generators are responsible for supplying the vast hotel load with power, starting with navigation electronics all the way to the cinema rooms. The stabilizers, which are vast fins hidden beneath the waterline, are always on the move, pivoting and adjusting in a constant manner. When maneuvering in tight harbors, bow and stern thrusters give the luxurious feeling of fingertip control, despite the enormous size that this vessel presents. What about the internal systems, such as piping, HVAC, and water makers? The air conditioning plants chill thousands of liters of water, circulating it through every cabin to keep guests comfortable in tropical climates. The process of reverse osmosis systems converts seawater into tens of thousands of liters of drinking water every day, while waste is treated in a discreet manner in onboard plants to meet the international regulations. This is a vessel that carries tenders, rescue craft, but also a lot more than that a fully capable submarine that's launched from a dedicated garage, as well as two helipads with hangars hidden inside her decks. Each of these systems required engineers to create huge internal spaces without compromising the yacht's strength. And there is the maintenance prospect that we need to tell you about. After 20 years of service, Octopus goes for a regular service, returning to the shipyard for her most extensive refit. The hull plating was scanned for thinning, welds inspected for fatigue, and entire systems replaced with modern equivalents. The electronics were rewired, her interiors refreshed, and her paintwork completely renewed. These refits are as demanding as the original build, which ensures that Octopus will continue her voyages for times to come. What I can tell you with 100% confidence is that this vessel doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon, judging from what missions it has completed in the past. Back in 2012, the yacht was loaned to the Royal Navy in their attempt to recover the ship's bell from the Admiral class battlecruiser HMS Hood, one that sank to a depth of 2,700 meters in the Denmark Strait during 